Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 12 of Spiritfarer, and a special early hello to both Patikan and Samalander. Uh, thank you both. Uh, Patikan was saying hello, and Samalander was saying the more angel streams in one day, the better. Uh, very, very much appreciated. Samalander, I hope that your Dungeons & Dragons uh, stream went just as well as your... Um, Farming Sims stream, uh, the D&D stream, I mostly was not able to make it for. I did have it on in the background, but unfortunately wasn't able to hear it in the way that I would normally want to. So I hope that you, yeah, it went great. That's awesome. So we're going to be hitting continue and I'm just, I just, on our way in, I just wanted to note that we are now rounding out the end of the July vacation that I had. Uh, we did have a chance to play this a couple of times. At near the beginning of vacation, I was saying like, man, it would be cool if I was able to finish Spiritfarer just because we'll have some extra time we can focus in on it. I'm at 37%. I have absolutely no idea what I was ever thinking that with the other playthroughs that were going on and even just the other activities that we have during vacation that there would be a chance to finish the game. But as I also said at that time, I am in no rush to be done. We are going to put in, oops, hold, none of this is right, hold on. I'm going to need some more coal pretty soon, and that probably means, yeah, I don't have anything else to do with coal, so we might as well do that. Let's, let's do a couple things, though. Uh, the smelting is going to take some time. Why don't we come in here, and we're going to cook a lot of sawdust. Which seems like a weird thing to put into your oven, but it is the way that we're going to be able to get some more charcoal. And we've got lots of it, and it doesn't go into charcoal that quickly, so that'll get it started. We're not yet head anywhere because, to be blunt, our main priority at this point is... What the hell? Okay, did I dream getting zinc? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Did we plant all the zinc? We might have planted the zinc on the turtles because that's what I... That's what would have been the smart thing to do so that we could get even more zinc. I hope I did that. If we didn't, I've really... I really have some questions for what's going on. Well, while we're waiting on turtles and friends to show up, let's get ourselves some more um, fire seed or whatever it's called. Fire glow seed. And then we're going to go check out these crates. And I might do some fishing on the way as well. So, as we go, and I'll bring up the, the little indicator here. I was just mentioning to Patikin before the episode began that uh, about a week ago, a little bit more than a week ago, we had uh, finally published here on Twitch the... Oh, well, see, now I don't have time to do this. The full playthrough of Star Trek Resurgence, and this was, you know, without going into the whole story that people have probably heard already, uh, a video that we had decided to put to, originally we had wanted to put it together as like, what if I'm not able to stream for a while, and then due to reasons, wound up putting out in its entirety for everybody to enjoy right away, uh, and some folks, Patikan included, had said, uh, you know, hey, I'd like to see this, but I prefer to watch VODs on YouTube, and there's a number of reasons that people might want to do that. Uh, it's got, frankly, better playlist functionality. It can be easier to go to from one episode to the next. Uh, I can't swear to this next part, but people have said that um, YouTube is better on bandwidth than Twitch is, particularly for VODs. So this all leads to the new reveal that it is now available in its entirety on YouTube, uh, organized into a playlist, just like we have a collection here on Twitch. And that is ready and available for absolutely everybody who might be interested in checking it out. And yes, the seeds are above me. Whether or not I can get this one remains to be seen. We did get that one. Yeah, the fire glow seeds. That's what I was thinking of. Oh boy, that is just a big swarm of them. Oh, hold on. Yep. Yeah, Fire Glow has been... It's basically the equivalent of, like, chili peppers or something, at least in terms of being a uh, cooking ingredient. Uh, it's used to make hot chips and, and hot sauce and other sort of, like, good spicy things that people seem to like. I'm trying to get that one, that one, that one, that one, and if we're very quick, this one? Yes. Yes. 
But it's all it's just all about, you know, options for people who are interested to see. I will say this, so if anybody knows the answer to this, I am all ears because we looked at this for uh, probably about an hour trying to sort it out. So on a YouTube playlist, you can control the order in which the video shows that they're going to show in the right order. Episode one, episode two, episode three, you know, numerical sequence. That makes a lot of sense. However, right now, right this minute, if you go to the to the um, videos tab on the YouTube page, the order in which you will see the video showing there is as random as I've ever seen anything be. The order of videos that are currently there, that's not the order that we uploaded in. That's not the order that we edited in. That's not the order in which they were processed. That's not the order in which they were published. That order reflects nothing in terms of how the videos were put together or organized on the, on the channel. And we absolutely cannot figure out how to fix it or how to make the, the episodes appear in order on the video tab. If that can be customized, Please, by all means, uh, let us know. You can DM or, or put it in a chat right now uh, if you see this. Let us know if you hear this in the future, because otherwise it is just completely baffling. You know, according to the video tab, episode three of an 11 part playthrough. And hello to debauchery. Wow, debauchery. I hope you're having a great um, July so far. So I do want to read chat, just um, doing a little bit of fishing here as we go to where we're on our way to. Uh, and we want to get the things. According to YouTube, episode three exists right alongside... Hold on, can I give you, like, some cherries? Episode three of the playthrough exists directly alongside the final recap that we did at the very end. I really want you guys to know these were updated... These were uploaded a day apart. Part three finished processing day, you know, a, a day or two in advance of when the, the recap episode went up. There's absolutely no reason for why these episodes would show side by side. I cannot possibly imagine why they, they uh, appear the way that they do on YouTube. But yeah, debauchery. I hope that you've had a great week. Hopefully, staying cool. A lot of the United States is currently under various heat advisories uh, due to very high heat and humidity. Hold on, let me pause just for one second. Debauchery has been cleaning all day. Hope you had a good Fourth of July. It went very, very well. Yeah, not a lot of fireworks in our area, uh, possibly because it was absolutely pounding rain all day long. Uh, but that was good for the animals and. Uh, there are many years of my life that I would have been very, very sad to not have fireworks on the 4th of July. Those days are currently behind me, so I was, I actually had a great time. All right, we're halfway through our charcoal cook, and... Yeah, we've got, we've got a few animal-related things to take care of here. Okay, just a quick pause, because I was talking a bunch during the Firefly hunt and so forth. Let's just scroll back. Debauchery, I hope the family's doing well, also. Like, we, I, I feel like we don't get a chance to check in nearly as much as I'd, as I'd like. I just hope that you're doing well. And if you're busy, completely understood. Can I rotate this without tweaking the wire at all? Fatigan says it continues from where you left off when you can't watch one VOD in one go too. With Twitch, it resets half the time from the start. So Patigan's glad that they're uploaded to YouTube because you posted them at the same time. It doesn't know which is first. Well, so Patigan, the thing is like, there's two episodes that exist right next to each other in the videos tab that were uploaded on different days and not published or updated in that order. It's very strange and like, if, the, if we did something wrong on our side, like, I'm not saying that what you said is wrong. I'm saying that, like, if, tw if YouTube has somehow decided that these videos were uploaded, published, updated, something in that order, like, right next to each other, we are currently unaware of what we did because the work on the episodes took place on different days and... The only thing that happened on the same day was when we, we went to publish them. And even then, wow, that that was a big scythe for a very low hanging um, bulb. 
and it's like it's not really a crisis, right? It's not it's not that big of a problem because the, the the playlist is there, and we found a way to prioritize showing the playlist, so that's what most people will see. However, there is just an element of wanting it to look semi competent, like like I don't know if professional is the right word, but you do want the content that you put up to look like it was put together by people who generally know what they're doing and and having the episodes on the videos tab be like wildly out of order i just want to acknowledge for anybody that is watching this at some point in the future or could possibly care we just don't know how to fix it on youtube youtube has a couple other quirks that we're learning to work around uh, one of them is that you create a playlist on one page, but have to go to an entirely different page in order to sequence the playlist, like to put it into the right order. Who knows? You know, some of this stuff is probably legacy stuff from previous iterations of the website. It's not that big a deal. It just sort of falls squarely into the, wow, that's really weird category. By the way, we need another corral for this sheep. So I'm gonna see if we can build one. I, I will note that for everything that I just said, it is absolutely no different than learning how to navigate the creation process on Twitch for the first time. Uh, we need copper and oak, lots of oak actually. We might be running some, some heavy industry tonight. Hopefully people won't mind. Uh, oak. Let's start off with not less than 15, because I think we need like 64 logs. Debauchery, as we go, uh, you know, I don't know from like, you know, what the kids like to play or whatever, but I will say that Spiritfarer is a very, very friendly kids game. I'll also say that sometimes the subject matter of the story, when I say that it gets... Like, we usually use in the United States here, adult as as a euphemism for, like, sexually explicit or something like that. This is absolutely in no way violent or sexually explicit. When I use the word adult to discuss the storyline in here, I mean that the storyline is broadly about loss of life and dealing with the things that in your life didn't go the way that you had hoped and trying to navigate your way towards acceptance of that on your way into the afterlife. It's a very sort of mature story. It's not overly, like, it's not excessively sad, but for anybody that's lost somebody, which I think is going to be more common as you get older, some of the story beats have hit hard. Uh, so I'll just say that. But outside of the some sometimes um, somber subject matter of the story, the overall tone is just delightful. I would feel very comfortable sitting my like niece and nephew down to play this one. Um, I was not paying any attention to how many oak logs, oak pl planks rather, we were making. We're just gonna look, and yes, I know that we need some copper as well. Uh, I just want to see what we need for this. Yeah, okay, so we got plenty of oak planks. Now, we do need two copper ingots, and where I don't have zinc, I do have copper. So let's drop some copper in here. And copper is pretty easy to smelt, I think. I do want to read in chat, by the way. Um, I'm just getting our furnace up to temp. We'll let it not go quite so low, but we also want to make sure it doesn't get too hot. Okay, I think I think one more pump of the bellows is going to keep us happy. Like I like there was a big chunk of my growing up time that I would have adored a game like this. This kind of like do the mini games to build the stuff and then like build more stuff. Um yeah. Okay, let's grab our charcoal out, and we'll probably do some more just because I don't need to cook any food right now, and we know we're going to need some more coal. Uh, let's cook some more waste product. Yeah, and now we can go to sleep. I want to read in chat. So just before we do this, apologies for the quick pause. And hello to Hickey! Hickey, I hope your Saturday's been great. Debauchery saying, 
everyone is doing well, trying to stay out of the heat, but overall family as well. That's awesome. And I really mean that because there's times in your life suddenly somebody's sick or, or not doing well in school or whatever, so I'm just glad that everything's going well. Sam Lander says, I haven't tried, but I think what you need to do is make the out of order ones private, then release them one at a time. If that doesn't work, and we did try that, although maybe we didn't wait long enough, uh, make them private, re-upload them, then upload and release them in order. Ugh. We probably will need to do that. So I, I will also say this, Sam Lander, like this is not like we've already moved on to the next series, something that is not yet released so that it will be ready when it is released. And... The thing is, we don't know what order those will appear in because the order the order that Star Trek has shown up, again, bears no resemblance to when they were uploaded or published. So I might try that as well after this. But Tegan's saying the upload date is different than putting them public. The reason it's all random. You put them public at the same time. Uh, check above what I said about that issue. Hold on. Uh, you might be able to fix it by putting them private and then making them public one by one. And if that does not work, use the... Oh, the schedule feature. I wonder if that would work. Right, because you can say, go live at this time. Maybe set them in like 30-minute uh, increments or something. I use a schedule thing when I put multiple episodes live, so it's in order. If they release at the same time, says Sam Lander, YouTube just kind of does it at random. So maybe they have to be at least like five minutes apart. What you'd want to do is make them all private, then schedule releases an hour apart in order, or just 15 minutes, says Patikin. I've done it. Okay. Patikin, so we might try that. Um, I sleep until morning. It's one of those things where <sighs> sometimes, sometimes the devil is in the details, and it just... I'm not excessively obsessive about things like this. It's just a matter of when somebody stops by and they just see like a big pile of random episodes, it's like the fact that there's a playlist and whatever else is not necessarily going to matter. They might say like, oh boy, what a fly-by-night operation. They clearly don't, don't care very much about the quality of what they're doing. Okay. Hey, uncle. Uh, probably up for a hug. It's been a minute. Um, and he's basically a garbage compactor, so we'll just give him some cherries. Okay. Oh, uh, we should be giving them some feed. Uh, regular seeds of the sunflower variety. I need to start, um, growing more sunflowers, by the way. Because if we're, if we're gonna use sunflowers as our primary chicken feed, and they're a great chicken feed because they, they replicate so quickly. I bet I'm going to need some mulberries, too. We should get another orchard. Okay. So, here in the morning, I guess I should say hello to Uncle What's-His-Face. Eh, he can sleep in. We got some stuff to do. But Dean's saying that it should be at least 15 minutes because the schedule feature is 15 minimum. Okay. Yeah, whether or not we'll do that for this series or not, uh, like, because we, we put into, like, Mia's Discord and stuff the fact that it was live. Okay, this was not there before. We'll just adjust that. I'm irrationally concerned about somebody being in the middle of an episode and then when we set it to private so they can then be republished again, being like, all right, screw this, and then they just never, ever come back. But, yeah, when else are we going to be able to fix it? So, yes, I definitely want to see Arena. I think that Arena is is going to have all of our zinc for us. And I can't... Oh, hold on. So the controller just died. Give me one second here. As always, I was cautioned coming in, hey, I think the controller might be low make sure you have the wire handy and so I do it is amazing what you can do hold on you're gonna hear some PC-ness here with a second set of eyes keep an eye on the things that you overlook but yeah if nothing else like like for Patik and Samalander uh, debauchery 
Um, having Hickey, um, having the hold on one second, having this knowledge will be tremendously helpful for the next series that goes up because now we can make sure that that one goes up in the correct order. Okay. There we go. Now think for one second. Uh, we're on the path. I wanted to make a, a corral and then maybe another orchard, but let's start with corral. And I think we can fit one right here. Yeah, not quite in there, but in here. Ugh. Yeah, I really hate this placement, but whatever. Okay, and the, the sheep just appeared there. So we're good there. Uh, one more orchard would be cool. And yes, I do see that we have some places that need to be updated. So we need nebula threads and oak planks. Let's water the crops first. Uh, we'll get this in a second. Patina is saying that it might work without re-uploading. Oh, yeah, um, I, so... I think that what you guys said, I think, uh, was it Sam Lander? I think you guys said, what, what, sorry, I need to get my language straight. I think what you guys are talking about with, like, when YouTube sees that they all went up, like, within the same minute, it doesn't know how to process that. So it just sort of like dumps them into a big pile, like a big, a big unsorted pile. That makes more sense than any other thing. So even if they were like a few seconds apart, if YouTube just classifies them all as quote, just now, followed by like one minute ago, five minutes ago, one hour ago, but like internally, it's all like on the same moment, then yeah, it might get, oh, hold on, hold on. I want to talk to Arena. I want to make sure that she doesn't decide to go back underwater. I've made sushi. I've made a delicacy. Have some sushi. Feed it to the others. They'll love it. Hey, I don't think that we've ever gotten sushi at all, much less from him. What is that? Is that rice and fish, do you think? I'm just letting you guys know, we might plant some of this zinc again right back here. Because, oops. Uh, we worked hard to get this zinc. Hello to Jab! Jab, we've talked on a few occasions uh, this week about the weather and such. I hope that you are continuing to do well, staying cool, hydrated, and... Um... Is it your... It's your knees, right? I don't know. Some people have, like, more, like, joint issues when it's very cold. Um, I don't know if this is having any impact there, but I hope that overall you're... You're doing well. Uh, let's plant some zinc. Let's plant some zinc. And apparently we need some copper, so this is a bit weird, but let's plant some copper as well. I don't want to put all my ores in one basket. Yes, I'm all set. Jab is going to be in and out crafting today. Jab, uh, no, no need for... Just so that you know, one of the topics uh, so far today was about just... Hold on, she likes simple food, and I don't remember what we gave her last time. Does she like popcorn? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Munchkin. Mm -hmm. Bring her here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and... Yeah, she's in a very good mood. Doesn't like the banging, feels bu bullied by Mickey. Eh, don't we all? So, now I've got some zinc, and I don't have any place specific to be. But I am going to say that I probably want to not be here so that when uh, Irina comes back up, we can come back. So let's just set a course for anywhere, up to and including the place where they might have some more uh, zinc. We can just go mine some more. Zinc ore, yeah, at least one of those dots is filled in, so let's head up there. And we're going to learn how to um, smelt some zinc as soon as I figure out how to stay inside this door. So, zinc. That is a very, very narrow band. Have we done... Maybe we did do some zinc last time, because I remember having a very narrow band of 
eligibility. Okay, now we just sort of got to keep it at this temperature. Uh, see, that's going to be a little too hot. I made this comparison at one earlier point in the playthrough. There's something that inexplicably reminds me of Mickey Mouse, uh, Donald Duck's Playground, rather. Uh, an old Commodore 64 game that when I was uh, coming up, I really liked a lot. I, I, that was one of those games that I'd return to over and over and over again for like a day or two, just to run around and earn the money and do the mini games. The way that this game, like here we're not earning cash by doing the mini games, but... We are doing the mini games to advance our progress anyway. Mm -hmm. A snack or something. Yeah, he's getting a little hungry. Can we just like give him like some cherries or something? Oh, did I get I gave him that before? Let's give him something else altogether. Have some grilled mm -hmm. fish. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let's check up here. Zaja! Oh my goodness, Zaja, thank you so much for the raid! Um, yum. um Patikan or Samalander, if either of you are here, can we be sure to do a shout out for Zaja? Um, Zaja, you were oh gosh, I checked in on it earlier, and I'm completely forgetting. It wasn't RuneScape today. Oh, I'm completely blanking on it. League of Legends! That's exactly what it was. Patikan, thank you for um doing the shout out. How were the rest of your your matches? League of Legends is something that I understand um, in an extremely remote sense. Uh, just because I've played some Dota. I've played some Dota, and I've played a lot of Heroes of the Storm. So I understand MOBAs in theory, but each one is different. So uh, League of Legends is one of those that is the least familiar to me. Also, Zaja, I know that you and I have spoken about the Netflix animated series that they did of... League of Legends at one point, but, which I, we still haven't seen, by the way, so I'd like to see it. Did we ever talk about that RPG that they did on Steam? The matches were really good. Hit hit a level nine hype train. Wow, congrats. Yeah, on Steam, there's a, there's an RPG, uh, a, a, um, a League of Legends role-playing game that is well-reviewed. And I, you know, we picked it up in some previous sale and have not had a chance to play it yet, but it's it's on the list for sure. Okay. Let's feed our sheep. Oh, let's definitely feed this sheep. Here, have some cherries. Or whatever I just gave you. Zaja has seen it, but not yet played it. Yeah, I didn't look at it because we already have it, so I didn't look at it on this Steam Summer Sale, but it's probably, probably a good price. And Fox McCloud, I hope that you're having a great Saturday as well. Yeah, let's just make sure everybody has food. Okay, we've watered the crops. I haven't yet made the nebula thread for our new orchard. But let's go ashore and see if we can get a little bit more zinc. Because the thing is, we know that we need zinc for a variety of things. Uh, one of them is for the house. And you'll see that I haven't yet uh, built the house for Mickey. Oh, no, see, that's ineligible. I'm picking up some ore. But, oh, see, this one we can mine. I don't think this is the um, zinc, though. Unless it is. Nope, that's coal. Well, that's good. I mean, I can use some coal. Huh? Iron. Oh. I eat the same sandwich every day. Tuna with lots of mayo and a little bit of lettuce on whole wheat bread. I just love oh. it so much. I add the lettuce at the last second. I want that incredible crunch when I bite into it. Do you know where you'll find me at oh. lunchtime? That's right, eating that tuna, tuna sandwich. I also like um, tuna sandwiches. 
but with none of the other stuff that they just mentioned. I mean, the whole wheat bread would be fine, but when I have tuna, a, a great way in, in my view, this is not a popular opinion, but it's mine, um, a great way to really ruin a tuna sandwich is to put up those little, like, uh, chopped up bits of celery. I'm okay with celery, and I'm okay with tuna. If you mix those two things together, we will not get along. I just, <laughs> I, I, I don't know why it bothers me so much, but yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big tuna with no celery in it person. I have, wait, is this the, no. And I cannot get higher from here because I do not have bounce technology. Okay. Zaja's gonna go grab some food, enjoy the rest of the stream. Zaja, thank you so much for the, um, for the great stream earlier and also for the raid, and I hope that you have a great evening. Okay. Um, I, it's late enough that I don't think that we have any place else that we need to be. So what I'm gonna do is let's smelt a little bit more zinc ore. It's gonna take a second to get up to temp. Oh, here's a story that no one cares about. So over the last couple years, I have reminisced about an altogether different Commodore 64 game that I grew up playing and I could not remember the name of it. And I described it as being like in a hot air balloon. Like you had to like find and then launch a hot air balloon and you would be sort of at the, the mercy of the wind and have to know which direction the trade winds were blowing at which altitude in order to navigate the world. But I could not find the name of it. So after sort of like broadening the search and, and I have to say getting a little bit of uh, additional like advice here, we were able to find it. And it's called uh, the search for the most amazing thing is the name of the, the game that I have been trying to think of and remember for a long time. And so I looked on YouTube. This has multiple ingredients in it, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, can we do a hug? Looked on YouTube and there are playthroughs of In Search of the Most Amazing Thing. I guess when this game came out, it was uh, fondly regarded as sort of an edutainment title that uh, people people were very impressed by how it taught various forms of communication and the residents would communicate by way of like pictographs that would make music as you drew them or played them back so there would be like some meaning there and I watched some YouTube videos of both the Amiga and the Commodore 64 version this game is entirely incomprehensible and I know that it was sort of like a thing back in the day that there were no in-game tutorials to sort of like walk you through things. They very much expected you to read through the manual. Um, and we might have even had the manual when I was playing this game back in the day, but it's complete nonsense. Like nothing in the interface makes any sense. There's no sense of like, and there, there actually is, I take it back, there actually is sort of a rudimentary in-game tutorial that shows, like, um, here's where the auction house is, and here's how you put something up for auction, and here's, like, the three stations that's inside this uh, B-liner, is what the vehicle was called. It's part, like, all-terrain vehicle and part hot air balloon. But, like, I was looking at this and being like... I don't know how I ever figured out how to do anything. And by the way, the more that I looked at it, I'm now thoroughly convinced that I never did figure out how to do anything. Never. I think that I figured out how to go up and down in the elevator, get into the B-liner and drive around a little bit and then maybe launch the hot air balloon. And everything else was from the manual, which now that I think about it, we absolutely did have. It's, it's amazing how cryptic those older games would be to our modern eyes. I have no particular desire to travel backwards in time, but if I were, one thing that I would not look forward to doing is spending a lot of time on old Commodore 64 games and trying to work out what the hell anything is. For example, like, you can go to the store in the search for the most amazing thing. There's a store that you can go to to buy upgrades for your B-liner. Uh, and I think that the gen the gist of it is that you're supposed to draw pictures to sell at auction to make money to buy the things that you want in the store. But everything in the store, first of all, there's like 
You have to push the cart around, go up and down the aisles, select the thing that you want, then go to the checkout and pay for it. It's so slow. And then it's not like, oh, this is the autopilot module or this is the, the altitude module. Every single thing is called like, um, like, like HGT 13. And you're supposed to figure out that that's the height module, which translates into the altitude module to tell you how, how high up in the sky you are. And you don't start with that. Like these basic upgrades, you have to earn money for in order to purchase and then install in the beeliner. Also, I'm not convinced that this game had a save feature. I think that if every time you wanted to play it, you'd probably have to do all of these things from scratch. People today say, oh man, modern games are so handholdy. They They don't let you find out and discover things. I grew up in an era where the games explained Zilcho and you had to figure it out entirely on your own, and I'm letting you guys know this is better. <laughs> the world we live in, where like games are like, here's, let's teach you how to have fun, and then you can just go have fun. That's a lot better, I think, than dropping you into the world with an interface that, um, there's no standards that exist because everything is still too new. Uh, and everything is referred to by a weird acronym. Like, if you want that experience, go ahead and play, like, Battlecruiser 3000 or one of its versions. Uh, you know, there's... there's a lot there, but the game is not interested in helping you learn how to do anything. Jab, by the way, is saying that he never uses celery. I use relish or chop up some pickles myself. Pickles in... tuna fish sounds like an interesting combination. Uh, I'm generally, when it comes to tuna fish, generally, no, well, no, I do like some cheese in my tuna fish sandwiches. I feel like that, if you were to describe it to me and I hadn't had it, I would say that sounds really gross. But yeah, uh, a, a tuna fish sandwich with some provolone cheese in it is actually really good. Fox McCloud says, I came from a family gathering and somebody put on music, which someone then said, rock on. And I yelled, rock and stone. <laughs> <laughs> Fox McCloud is also saying back when you had a a dictionary size manual. Yeah, and then like sometimes there would be some DRM written into the manual. So it would literally be like, go, you know, what is the seventh word in the second paragraph on page four? And you'd better be able to find out what that is because otherwise we're gonna get some more zinc. And while we go, I let's we might we might want to do some more um what's it called thread nebula thread however crusher yes we now have everything that we need so we will build a crusher and I like to keep my industry on the first floor now so let's do that okay let's weave some nebula thread real quick I think we needed a total of 10, so let's find some nebula fibers. Let's see if we loom five. That is perfect. Okay. What else did we need for the orchard? Uh, build. Orchard. Oak planks. We need four oak planks. I don't think that'll take but a minute. Okay, that was a real rough cut. I don't know if we're gonna get all four off of that. No, even there we got three. Oh, hold on. If I can do like uh, rock catching, we will. Is it too late? I'm gonna sail past this whole place. Nope. I'm sure she's a beaut. Try, oh, try crushing something. It'll make you feel good. Let some of that rage out. What? I'm not gonna explain it. A child can do this. You make the machine go smash. It's a piece of cake. Here's a few rocks to get you started. Let it roar. I'll wait here and listen to the sound of crushing. I thought, I thought it was about the, the place. So we've never done this before, obviously. Let's crush up 
Okay. Let's, so we need some comet powder. So this seems like a good place to start. Let's just put in a couple and try to figure out how it works. Oh, it's just press X. Hey, whoa! Okay, we got two comet powders. I think we're gonna need more than that. Oops. I want to talk to you. Ricardinho, thank you so much for the raid! You crushed that rock like there was no tomorrow. I could hear it beg for mercy. That was pretty amazing. That felt good. You got some chops, Scout. I know you'll be able to do this next job. Look, uh, Mickey needs a house. Not just any house. He needs a goddamn palace. Marble, gold mirrors, indoor palm trees, the whole nine yards. Something that would make our neighbors back home furious. But neighbors with a U, if you know what I'm saying. Get it done. Ricardinho, it was awesome to see you on today. I... Wow, two things to think about really quick. Uh, A, it was awesome to see you doing some um, Minecraft. Also, Ricardinho, I keep forgetting to ask. In Minecraft, you have what appears to be a built-in feature that puts on screen an, a text description of the sounds in the game, and it's so well integrated, it actually looks like it's part of the game. Is that a mod that you installed, or is that just a thing in in Minecraft? Because it's, it's a really nice feature for people. Like, there's no dialogue in Minecraft, so there's no, like, subtitles that would be necessary for, like, a story perspective. So instead, it's a... It's a mod that describes, like... Like, here, it would say, down at the bottom right-hand corner of Rick Harding's stream, it would have, like, sound of rain falling, um, pickaxe powering up, uh, sound of pickaxe hitting uh, zinc ore, or something like that. Like, it's not too descriptive, but it gives you... It gives you some idea of what the game sounds like. It's a setting, and I like it a lot too, says Ricardinho. That's awesome. That's like watching Mia play Forza Horizons with the... Wait, we're not done here. Uh, with the... Uh, American Sign Language option on. Okay, yep, let's put that in there. Whatever we have the least of at any given moment. Yeah, let's put in some more zinc ore. And then... I'm gonna put in some silver. Even though we have a little bit more of that. Okay. Yes, I'm all done. Also... I am 90% sure that I did ask this once before, but I'm blanking entirely on the answer. Are you, Ricardinho, are you doing a new, um... Hold on, what's her favorite? Uh, noodle soup. It's been a minute. Uh, we'll talk about a hug in one second. Noodle soup. Hey, this broth, it's my favorite. I couldn't ask for a better noodle soup, munchkin. Uh... Also, I feel pretty good about having a hug right now. It's our second one of the episode, but what can I say? I'm feeling a little bit lovey-dovey over here. Good, I needed that. I guess I'll just stand out here in the rain. You know, how much we cats like water. Uh, give him a peach. Uh, he- we just gave him a hug. No, he's pro-hug. Safe in our world was the end of the- the question. Um, I didn't know if there was another event coming up. My memory is that the event last year happened a little bit before the Extra Life Marathon. Um, so it might be a couple months away. I don't even know if it's like an annual event or not. But one way or the other, I'd like, I'd love to be able to shout it out and to make sure that people are aware of it. Safe in Our World is a charity organization that Ricardinho has done some work with in the past. They focus on mental health, specifically in the gaming space, both above among developers and players. Uh, it, among other things, recognizes the fact that sometimes people use games, like this one, to process their... Uh, their feelings and to connect with one another and sort of looks for more to spread awareness more information and constructive options for that let's look at build i wanted the orchard right yes so um i mean i guess up here i, I don't know 
I don't I don't really like building vertically for no reason, so I guess we'll put our orchard down here. We can always move it later if we want to. And let's be sure to get this put in immediately. Yeah, so we've got um, an olive tree that we can build and a mulberry tree. I don't know if we will require these ingredients at any point, but I figure we start the tree growing early. It's going to take a while to come up. Oh, the other thing that happened in Ricardinho's stream is somebody stopped by and said, Oh, hey! By the way, I'm a Twitch graphic designer. Wouldn't you like me to send you your send you samples of my work? And it's just like... I I miss the opening of that conversation. I I would have I think waited to gauge Ricardinho's response to this, but usually when somebody comes into your stream and introduces themselves by advertising some other ser system or service that they've got going on, my response is uh no. Would you care to leave or would you like me to show you the door and uh, then escort them out of the stream because they're not there for any reason other than to hawk their wares. And, you know, I can respect the hustle, but there's unlimited other channels to go practice your hustle on. Ricardinho has to look into it, but I think they have projects planned to run for quite some time, but then also events where they gather charity money. Well, it, Ricardinho, in the event that you do have something coming up with them, uh, that you're going to be participating in, definitely let us know. I would love to help signal boost that. Yeah, I'm not giving away any of my tomatoes. Yet. Okay, everybody's got food. Everybody's been watered. We need to stop by the crusher, and we need to crush up some more Comet. If there is anything to this other than jam on the X button a bunch, like if there's any timing or other feature to it, I don't know. Regarding you saying, yeah, it felt like quite the pre-written conversation this fellow had ready. Um, yeah, I, uh, so let's try a couple other things. Let's crush up some sunflower seeds because I don't know what else comes out. But that's the thing. They're not there. Yep, sunflower oil. We're going to be able to make the, um... What's it called now? The fried chicken, I bet. In fact, let's go do that right now, because that's going to take some time to cook. It reminds me of... Uh, so let's put in the chicken. And I feel confident enough in this recipe that we're just going to... Yeah. Do it. Give me some fried chicken. That's what Uncle Atoll wants. Okay. Um, from here, let's see what else we can crush up. Let's crush up some coal. Hello to Wood! Who says, um, hola todos, uh, como están? Well, I'm doing great. I hope that you are also having a great Saturday pick up our carbon powder. Carbon powder has not come up as an ingredient that we need. I bet this is just going to be straight up sugar. Package of sugar. Yep. Uh, Ricardo News says, not a fan of this type of advertisement. Like you said, it's totally out of place. Yeah, that's the thing. They're not coming in because they are interested in your content. They are, at best, looking to hawk their wares and more likely looking to hawk their, you know, whatever they put into an, these days, whatever they put into an AI gen, um, art generation prompt. I think if it goes over to sleepy time, we should probably stop doing this. Silica powder we definitely need. I don't know how much, but we'll get this all ground up. There's really nothing more to this, more or less, than just Jam on X. 
every other minigame has some element of skill to it. Okay, and I'm gonna need some more oil, I'm sure. Wood is saying uh, that she woke up late, so it's probably good. In terms of the, uh, are you into s Sunday now? In my head, Wood is Canadian, and it's just now occurring to me that that's probably way off. Okay, our fried chicken is still frying. Um, so what is the next thing that we'd want to build and what do we need to get to it? The foundry we already have. We needed the smithy next and we're not ready for that yet. So the crusher we've done, the orchard we've done, the foundry we've done. We have everything here now. Okay. From there, it's time for Mickey and Bruce's crib. So this is going to take, we have most of what we need, but we need four ash planks. If I can make it in here before the before it rolls over to sleep time, let's get ourselves some ash planks. I bet two is gonna be enough. And you'll notice that we're not moving because, like, there's no place that we would go in the amount of time that we have. So, Mickey and Bruce's crib. This is... Wow, they were not kidding about the size. Um, we could put it there. That kind of sucks. Um, yikes. Okay. Let's put it here for a second. And then we're going to do some editing. Let's move this over here. And this over here. And then I'm thinking, no, we can't even really move this, can we? So if we put this right here... Yeah, that doesn't go below that. Um, how high is this on either side? It's, it's... Like, could we put the sheep corrals underneath it? Like, underneath its shoulders here? Kind of. We can kind of do that. You know something? Let's not sweat it too much right now. Uh, let's just get this down. And then we'll slide that over one. I don't like it at all, but it's what we got. Okay, and now it's sleepy time. Uh, we will turn in for the night. Oh, what is in Los Angeles? How is it how's it doing out there? Is it like super hot or are you guys doing okay? I'm gonna wake everybody up. Speaking of Los Angeles, um, I finally remembered the actually I didn't remember it. I looked on the shelf. The name of the book that I was trying to remember that Zar and I were talking about the other day, and I had actually recapped it in some detail uh, during an episode of Near Automata, was called See You Later. And that was a Christopher Pike book about the, uh, the time traveler. It was an interesting... It's an interesting book. It's very much young adult based, and it's interesting to revisit now just because so much of it is dependent on the computer technology of the time, and like, you know, I, I think at one point they're making a... They're designing this video game and being like, what, what are you talking about? This game is going to require one megabyte of RAM? The five richest kings in Europe can't afford that. What are you talking about? That's way too much. It's like... Yeah, at the time, that was a lot. <laughs> and now, what is this system? The system that I have right now, I think, is 32 gigs. Uh, hey, this is what I'm talking about. You don't mess around. We need to give you a proper nickname. Mickey, what do you think? Right? I don't like that. That's already taken. Phantom Terror? That's no good. Give him a minute. Okay. 
I, I guess I guess we're still waiting on our nickname. So this is their crib. Uh, they've got a spot a spot down here. I would assume that Mickey sleeps upstairs because I don't feel like um, Mickey can go up and down the ladder. Wood remembers those days, as do I. Yeah, I remember. I remember wanting so much to upgrade to a Pentium class processor. Uh, let's see. Exotic and comfort. Small and plain. Large dish type incredible. Wow, and I didn't even make this. Uh, steamed shellfish. That's an acquired taste though. Exotic and comfort. What, what does he like? He likes fine dining, doesn't he? Didn't we uh, establish that? Yeah, have some bisque. Mm -hmm. Okay. He is not very happy. Oh, well, he needs a home. And I guess I'm going to give him one. Oh, Beverly's... So, Beverly's farmhouse, he also needs the clear glass sheet, which I don't know... Also, I don't have a house set. Oh, the lounge. The lounge is what he wants. So, silk I cannot do. And then the lounge requires some ash planks now that we have the, the thing. Let's see. We're going to need some more zinc before too long. Uh, can I come right back? Okay, we are moving. I also remember seeing, I remember seeing Virtua Fighter, the first Virtua Fighter in the arcade for the first time, and just being blown away at the quality of those graphics. Fried chicken, perfect. So, I'm curious, if we built, if we made, like, um, fish, herring seems, uh, pretty straightforward. Fish and rice, does that make sushi? I feel like it can't possibly. Okay, let's stop by Arena and get our latest shipment of zinc and such. Wood remembers uh, when she first whoops, started her job in imports, a lead was teaching me some stuff on an old work computer and had to put in a five and a half inch, five and a quarter inch floppy drive, floppy disk for the OS. I remember, I remember coming home with a copy of Civilization that I had saved up for to buy and then realizing, no, 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 it was Sim Earth. It was Sim Earth. I remember uh, Sim Earth, and I wanted to play it so much because I thought that it was like Sim City, but like on a planetary scale, because that's what it had sort of like built itself as. And not being able, having to return it because our our home computer, I discovered, did not have a hard drive, and I did not know what a hard drive was. I thought, I thought like a hard drive was a three and a half inch floppy disk. Like that's a you know, oh, it just must be another name for that, because those are, like, hard disks. But, no. It's a- oops. Hi. Okay. And zinc, because... I feel like we're gonna be using a lot of that. I was very, very, very sad, and then... When I got a chance to play Sim Earth many years later, it is difficult to overstate how disappointed I was in that game. Like, we almost have to put game in quotation marks. Um, let's see. I... So I just feed him the fried chicken, right? It's not a give situation, I think. We've got grilled chicken, maple salmon,
Maybe I do give it to him. Give. Fried chicken. Well, this always makes me think of my dad. He loved preparing food. He was an absolute genius in the kitchen. His meals would always turn out perfectly. But while he was making them, he was angry. He couldn't take his focus away from making food. It was like he was trying to tame the kitchen or something. It was a fight to the death. He would always win. A meal could take him hours to prepare just right. It took him so long. I remember being a kid and when it was ready, I didn't care what food was in front of me. It could have been cereal for all I cared. I just hated watching him make food back then, waiting for hours for a meal I didn't care about. But every time I eat this, it doesn't seem that bad anymore. Well, thanks, Sprout. Okay. I think that we're still trying to, like, make his picture frame, and I should check to see what we can do there. What is saying a kid? Maybe a tadpole, but not a kid. That might be what he was thinking of, and it might be why he didn't care if it was cereal, because he could have just swam around in the milk. Hello to no oats! His dad was a line cook, said no oats. Uh, keep that in mind. I actually didn't see the first line of what he said, but he is hungry, so let's give him... Uh, surf and turf, I guess. Oh, right. Right, he's allergic to shellfish. I'm a bad friend. Okay, um, two things. Let's look at the picture frame. So I can do the picture frame now because I have enough comet powder. So let's put that up. It's not very large, but spice up your life. We did it. So now he's got all of his upgrades. As long as we're thinking about it, what upgrades do they want? Oh, actually, it's just a bunch of question marks. So a crystal glass sheet, a bronze sheet, and a clear glass sheet... Clearly, there's something... You don't put the glass into the crusher and make it into a sheet, do you? That's not how that works. I don't know how to make sheets of metal yet, or material yet. We'll have to figure it out. No, it's just saying, never seen somebody as angry in a kitchen as line cooks. It's... grueling and uncomfortable work. Like, I can... Uh... Wait, what's sugar and egg? What do you think we get? A Cadbury cream egg? I have no idea what this is going to make. Sugar and egg. Doesn't sound very appealing. I think we should organize a big dinner for everybody aboard. I'm not kidding around. Well, not everyone. Just a few people, maybe. I think it would bring spirits up. You should invite everybody and ask them what they want for dinner. Let's say three of your favorite dinner companions. What do you think? Uh, that's a good question. What do I think? Talk to Atoll. We just did. Invite everybody to dinner. Well, if I'm going to be allowed to invite my favorite people, then we're going to want to get um, Astrid. Um, I mean, Uncle Atoll's already on his way. Like, he's already invited. Is that it? Is it just Astrid? Like, Summer's not around, and Gwen's not around, and Alice isn't around. Do, do I really have to choose between Gustav and Mickey? Oh, Gu like, I'm um, sorry, Gustav. I, Giovanni is who I don't want to have. To, we're going to have him there, I guess. Oh, this looks amazing. You got it all. My house has never looked better. I'm sure the other passengers are already jealous, but let's not rub it in their faces. Hey, you! Who's he talking to? Me? Have you picked a first mate yet? If not, I'd like to volunteer. Obviously, I have excellent credentials. It runs in the family. To be honest, I just don't want to take any orders from the cat. Stella, you're running around all the time. You've been doing all these errands for everyone, putting others in front of your needs. When I look at you, I see a little bit of myself. Did you know that? But I want to let you in on a little secret. You might love to run around and help all these people, but you need to take some time for yourself. Do something that's only for you. That's something I never got to do myself. I suppose that's why I'm here. On this world, on this boat. That's why Viv and my daughters don't have me around anymore. Well, at least we got each other, Sprout. Yep, that's the story about how I died. <laughs> oh. 
it's like they're so they're so cheerful and matter of fact about like these incredibly dark things. Oh wait wait wait. Um, Sam Lansing sounds like flan or custard. Uh, Wood says either works for her, but you have to keep stirring cut custard. Probably flan too. Well, place your bets, because we're going to find out right now. As soon as I can make my way downstairs. Ah, creme brulee! We were all wrong. I didn't know that that's what creme brulee was. <laughs> sugar and sugar and egg. So what else can we make with sugar, do you think? Uh, maybe we can make like a candied apple. That would be pretty good. Oh, and it's very fast. Ding. Fruit candy. Okay, so I'm going to assume then that that is multiple different types of fruit would give us that. How about sugar and corn? This has got to be high fructose corn syrup. Uh, let's go to the crusher. What haven't we crushed yet? Actually, this is all we can crush. So I think we've crushed a little bit of everything, which means that I don't know what else we would need to crush. We're using a lot of sugar, so let's... There, now we'll have some extra sugar. And also, like... So, invite everybody to dinner. Uh, it's nighttime. Yeah, most people are going to be inside. Let's get on the path, and then we will see what who's available when we get to wherever it is that we're going. Noah says, this is how I picture college kids learning to cook. Just, like, randomly shoving things together and being like, Oh, weird, I accidentally made a baked Alaska. I don't know why I planted linen. It's probably, it's probably the crop that we need the least of right now. Uh, let's put in some more sunflowers, because again, if I'm putting seeds, I'm now using seeds to make oil, as well as seeds to feed birds, so... Oh, let's see if we can invite Gustav, is it too late? Well, it's not too late to feed him, Jesus. Um... Does he like paella? Hmm. You can taste, no, feel the rich flavors. Quite the exotic palate, Skipper. Uh, let's give him a hug. Okay, uh, mood is, uh, it's okay. Not great, but going okay. And now, let's talk to him. That over-energized friend of yours is organizing a dinner. Good thing you are taking care of the food, my dear. Let's see, something that takes skill. Some tuna tataki, perhaps. That sounds decent. Oh no. Well, let's find out what you need to make while well, I... Tuna tataki. I do think that we have some tuna. I'll have to double check. Cereal bowl. Wait, what did I put together? That was sugar and what? That was sugar and um, corn. I would have thought like milk and corn would give us cereal, but whatever. Um, recipes. Tuna tataki. I'm not going to recognize it by its graphic. Here we go. So tuna and savory veggie. Oh, I actually have the um, the tomatoes for this. So let's... Tuna and savory veggie. Do I have any tuna? And if not, I have albacore tuna. Is that good enough? I hope so. And then a savory veggie. Like... Wait, I can't put... No, that's apple. Tomato. S might say it's a savory veggie, but we know it's just a fruit. Okay, tuna tataki. Uh, before we go to bed, the lounge, I, I don't remember what we needed for that. Ash planks. I would do that tonight.
Yeah, I had such, uh, like, fond memories, although I couldn't remember the name of it, of the Search for the Most Amazing Thing game, and then to see it. And it's not a matter of, like, graphical presentation. It's the realization that it is not conceivable that I ever once ever understood what I was doing in the game or what I was meant to do. Because, like, reading the description uh, on, like, Wikipedia and other places about, like, what this game was supposed to have you doing is way far away than what I ever did with it. Okay, let's build ourselves a lounge. I'm telling you, man, ev everything was hidden away behind getting zinc. Um, yeah, that looks awful. Let's put it right there. We'll probably see if we can upgrade it presently. Let's give you some of our 130 cherries. I am not a good cook. However, I am capable of following directions very carefully. And every time I have tried to cook something from a from a recipe. Oh, interesting. Cool. Okay, so we've got a jukebox in here. We can play our favorite tunes if we want to. Unless there's, like, a phrase or something in a recipe that just, like, I, I fundamentally don't understand how to mechanically do, uh, usually it's turned out really well. There have been exceptions. Uh, but I mostly... I think of cooking the way I think of fashion. Thank God somebody knows how to do it, because then I can just do what they say. Sam Leonard does not cook a lot of recipes. Yeah, see, I can only cook recipes. Otherwise, otherwise, I'm basically Homer Simpson in that episode where he took some cereal, put it into a bowl, poured milk on the on the cereal, and it caught on fire. No, Oz, I don't think that I said this yet, but I hope that you're having a great, um, a great weekend. Okay. Uh, let's make sure that we got our tuna whatever. And then make sure that we don't feed it to anybody until we have the big actual dinner. Tuna tataki. And we got three three helpings of it as well. So. That's everything for tonight, I think. <laughs> what are you saying? Recipe? Is that something you craft craft with metal? Uh, it does if you go to Joe Juba's house. Joe Juba once, during a, an episode of Replay or Super Replay, pitched to everybody the idea of, like, preparing food from non-edible things, like, like aluminum cubes or something. And nobody in the room, and none of the viewers, including myself, understood what the hell he was talking about. But, yeah, apparently that's an idea that has occurred to him. Like, what if there was... Okay, so this is a full-grown tree now. What if somebody prepped a meal based on things that were not edible and then served it to someone with their understanding that this was not meant to be uh, ingested? It's a very odd idea. Oops. I'll tell you what, since we don't have anything else currently in the kitchen... What's our other, like, new ingredient? Oh, g onion! Onion and garlic! We haven't made anything with onions or garlic. Onions and... Mushrooms? Is that good? It sounds fragrant to me. Top off our bird feeder. And let's wake everybody up, because I want to invite Astrid to, uh, to the meal as well. I think we're gonna get... I think it's gonna have to be... Gustav, Astrid, and then Mickey. Just because I really... I cannot in good conscience, invi conscience invite, um... Uh, Giovanni to a meal that's also gonna have Astrid. That just, it just seems like we're putting on display and making everybody super miserable. OK, 
Okay, Astrid. Hey, Etul wants me at dinner? Hmm, sure. I guess I should be there. I don't know. I'm not sure if I, uh... Anyway, if I get there, I should eat some noodle soup. It will probably be fun to talk to everybody. Or not. See you there, Munchkin. So, noodle soup I think I have. Let's actually double check, because I don't want to be stymied by an inability to progress. Noodle soup. I think we have a couple. Uh, noodle soup. We do have three. Okay. No, I used to watch a decent amount of cooking YouTubers uh, to get the vibe of a dish and then try to make it on your own. Uh, or try to make it your own. And did you do it yourself, Oats? Like, were you able to, like, take their... Take their ideas or their recipe or their presentation and like replicate it well or do something interesting with it also wood is a fan of scallops i'm not sure that i've had scallops i've had a wide variety of sushis but i don't know if i've ever had scallops mushroom salad there you go uh, what else so garlic is another thing that we've picked up uh what can we make with garlic we can make a, you know, use mushrooms. How about garlic? How about garlic and scallops? Let's give that a shot. See what we make. Mm -hmm. You know, it would be nice, something to eat. But not any of the noodle soup. I want to save that for dinner. How about some grilled chip? Grilled, grilled fish. Uh, hug? Mm -hmm. Sam is a big fan of scallops. Mm -hmm. I think my father really likes scallops. I've been mulling it over. It took me a while to figure it out. I don't think I'm happy here. I miss my family. I miss the way the house smells before a big dinner. I know I can't go back home. It's just not possible. But I don't want to be here anymore. I know that would mean not being with you, but I want to be alone for a bit. Take some time for myself. Maybe enjoy some quiet if that's even possible. Thanks for listening, Sprout. I do tend to get intense, but I don't want to put pressure on you. Hopefully that wasn't too much. Also, you're coming to dinner though, right? Because I don't want to go to dinner with, um, Giovanni. Hug? No, it says, if I failed the first time, I would get it decent eventually. Yeah, I suspect that with practice, you could learn to, like, know how to combine ingredients into something that would be good. Um, I don't have that practice. So, uh, I, like I said, I, I was reasonably good at taking recipes and following the steps correctly. So, the, the last person that we'd want to invite is probably uh, Mickey, uh, who is currently starving to death. Let's get him something that is not shellfish related and does have multiple ingredients. Rice pudding? Does he like that? Okay. Hug. And now talk. A dinner. Atoll who? I like food, so I'll be there, but I won't talk to anybody there. Maybe you can get something fried? A corn dog. Make it happen, Scout. Okay. Well, I don't know how to make corn dogs yet, so we're gonna have to look at the recipe. Shellfish stew is what that turned out. Okay, corn dog. Let's see if we can recognize it off the list. Here it is. Corn flour and pork. Wow, that's not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. Because I think I have those two things. Pork and corn flour. That's wheat flour, corn flour. Okay, we'll make a couple of those. And then I think we'll be ready for the dinner time. Uh, with the exception of maybe Atoll is not feeling like he wants to be sociable. Also, what is saying? Uh, pan seared and not overcooked. Uh... Oh, wow, Jab is saying that scallops are his favorite seafood. Uh, Bacon-wrapped scallops, says Jab. Apparently that's the, that's the good stuff. Let's feed... Everybody wants to talk all of a sudden. Hold on. 
Um, I guess we'll let that ride. Now here comes the hard part. I need a sous chef. Somebody to help me prepare all the meals. A good chef always has a good team behind them. Believe you me, Stella. We make a great team. I'll just write down what everybody wanted. You just need to prepare it all. The heavy lifting, you know? Yeah, well, no, I've, I've, I'm actually way ahead of you. I, I assumed that was my job here. Mm -hmm. This is perfect. Mm -hmm. I couldn't have ever hoped for such a lavish saloon. Can't wait to rest my feet on the sofa. Hey, Peanut, mm -hmm. want me to fix you a drink? Yeah, come on, you know you want one. I would not accept food or drink from this person unless I watched it come out of the bottle myself and also watched him break the seal in the bottle. With just a dash of vodka. Mm -hmm. A virgin Caesar then? Really? Nothing? Bah, okay, suit yourself. Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna pour myself a little pick-me-up, all right? And catch my drift? Okay. Right, uh, wrong crowd. Ciao, ciao. Hold on, I don't know why his mood went down. Because we could give him a hug. Hmm. Mm -hmm. In all seriousness, I don't want him to have a bad afterlife. Do we know if he likes steamed shellfish? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Pretty happy with it. Hey, Scout, we got another errand for you to run. This one is fixing a problem you created. You gave us a house, which is nice and all. However, it's empty. It's got nothing. You need to add some pizzazz to it. Mickey's always had a certain, uh, lavish lifestyle. However, I can't tell you what he wants. You'll just have to figure that out. We're not interior designers. Word of, word of advice, Scout. Just get whatever's expensive and loud. Move it, stupid. <laughs> Uh, I think she's probably, yeah, Astrid's in a good mood. Okay, well, that's still cooking. So, the things that we need to outfit the mini mansion for Mickey is all stuff that I cannot currently do, because we need bronze sheets. Well, no, so I cannot crush like a copper ingot in the thing. You know what we need then? You know what we need? We need the smithy. That's exactly what we need. So let's go to upgrades. Yes, we can do the coral bouquet. We can't quite do this. And then I need some more silica powder at Albert Shipyard. So here's what we'll do. We're gonna go to Albert Shipyard. We'll set a course. Uh, crud. We're just going to get the uh, zinc and such. No, it says a virgin vodka and tonic. Hold the, t hold the tonic. Hey, we got our corn dogs. So I think... Hold on, because we should now have all of the things. Give tuna, t tuna tataki to Atoll. Oh, we have to give all the food to Atoll. I remember when I was young, I really liked um, daiquiris, but they all had to be obviously virgin daiquiris. I just really liked the taste of like, it was basically a fruit smoothie. That's what I really liked. Also, what is saying to cook bacon, how I like it, you have to crisp it and then you can't wrap it if it's crispy. Right, yeah, it would shatter. Um, however, but wait, um, Wood, what if you were able to, like, wrap it into the right shape? What if you could, like, no. I was thinking, like, if you could, like, wrap it around and then cook it so that it was crispy and held that shape and then slid the cooked scallop inside of it. But I don't know how you would get it, like, right. And if you wrap scallops in bacon and cook the bacon, uh, then you'll overcook the scallop. And, like, Wood, I don't think that's... Like, what is the recipe? Because now I'm curious from Jab. Because I don't think that's TMI. I think that that's, like, how would you... How do you cook two different meals that have very different cooking conditions and temperatures? So that they, like, go together. All right, we're still waiting on the other tree there to blossom. Or fruit. Uh, 
Uh, hold on. We can do all this when we're actually on the path. Let's go have a chat with... I hope this turtle's cool with us just using her as, like, a zinc farm for a while here. So as we're going, Mia has been offline for several days now uh, at a big event. I have not yet heard from her or Chivalry, but I believe that she will have been on her way home and will also be offline all of tomorrow. Uh, if she does get home, whether it's today or early tomorrow, I know from past experiences with this event that she'll be... There's sort of like a whole coming down process, and I don't mean in like a chemical way, I mean in like a happiness way. Uh, where they go, they... Uh, I can actually use some more oak, of all things. Uh, it's a very, very positive and uplifting experience, and then to sort of, like, reacclimate to the real world can be, uh, can be a big come down. So, hopefully she is having a... as smooth a transition as possible. Uh, Chivalry did almost a 12-hour stream. Oh, she is home! Oh, that's awesome! Chivalry, I hope that she is having... I was just saying, I hope that she's having a good sort of reacclimation to being back home and had a fantastic time. And then I was about to say, Chivalry did an 11 and a half hour stream. What was that? Uh, was that Thursday? I think it was. That was, that was a, I, I narrowly missed saying, like, like, thank you for the fun stream, because I had actually stepped away to get some coffee, and uh, it, it, it ended while I was in the other room. And of course, like, I'm trying to be quiet, so it went longer than expected. Sorry, it's nighttime. We will still set a course to go to the shipyard, which is here. Oh, and you know what? Let's stop by Olga's as well. Mia had a soft landing. That's awesome. Okay. Now... Oh, I was going to water the, water and pick the crops. Because we can do that at night. No one's going to tell us we can't. What is saying, if I was making scallops, I'd saute them in butter, serve them as an appetizer right before serving the main meal, um, or am I wrong? I know, I, I am inexperienced with the preparation, the proper preparation of scallops. That sounds great to me. Uh, yeah, we'll put in some more of that, and then we, whoops, 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 hold on, this is all the wrong button. Okay, that gets the... These deep feelings. Music will make us free for them. Uncork your passions. Uh, while I'm just sort of, like, catching fireflies here for a moment, uh, to recap one of the early, uh, topics of conversation, uh, the YouTube channel has its very first content on it, and it is the Star Trek Resurgence, uh, playthrough that we debuted here on Twitch about one week ago. So, if you would like a backup or alternate, uh, option to see some of the playthroughs, particularly, I think, the re- the pre-recorded stuff, um... The YouTube channel is live. We didn't yet add a link here on Twitch, but there is a link on the YouTube channel bringing you back to Twitch. We just didn't get it up here just yet. Okay, but please go up. And I do think that some of the... Some of the other playthroughs that we've done on Twitch are going to make their way over there. Uh, Jedi Fallen Order is one that I frequently think about as being a... Uh, a playthrough that I had a great time with, that um, I think people really enjoyed. Um, I certainly had a great time with it, and, like, that's an example of a playthrough that is not a recent one, um, but I think liable to make the cut to get moved over. It was, it was one of those playthroughs where every single episode had a combination of story beats, challenging combat, um, 
steady progress all the way through. Uh, and just, just great interaction with, with chat the whole way through. Oh, hold on. Some of the shorter playthroughs would also be fun to uh, put up just because they'd be easy. Like uh, Doki Doki Literature Club. Is there any rule that you're not allowed to put that onto YouTube or something? Like, I, I don't know where YouTube cuts the line on like distressing content or anything. Jab is saying, I don't cook them, I just eat them. But I would guess that you would cook the bacon separate, cook it until almost done, then wrap the scall scallops and cook it some more. Okay, everybody is happy. And I think, I think we did get the message that it's too late to navigate. Yeah, we are at a standstill, so we're going to turn in for tonight. Simulator is confirming that Doki Doki can go on YouTube. I feel like that'd be a fun one to have up there. All I'm saying is that, like, I don't think that every playthrough that we've ever done, or at least it's not going to get prioritized in that way. Uh, we'll probably focus on the the ones that... The ones that are more, like, VOD-friendly, I suppose. You know, Beyond Two Souls. That was another pre-recorded one. That was so much fun. Like... Of, of all the projects that you do, there's so, there's certain ones that tend to stand out, like, in your memory. And doing that series with Mia, where we would play to a specific point, um, not talk about it, and then have our, like, recap conversations on, uh, like, on the recording. And there is our first shipment of, wow, wait, Silk? Hold on, what did we... What the hell? What kind of tree... Isn't this our mulberry tree? Do mulberry trees cultivate silkworms? I... This is completely new information to me. Is that where silkworms come from? You grow like a mulberry tree and then the silkworms come and they hang out in there and then they spin silk threads? I had no idea that's what we were building towards. Um, let's make some silk fabric. Somewhere. Silk fiber, yes. Wow, okay, this is super fast. Okay, silk threads. And now I think we can make some silk fabric, but since I, I don't know how much I need of each, let's. Whoops. It's actually somewhat more than I intended to make. I felt like we smashed through something. Oh, that's the, the stony barricade. Okay, uh, silk. Not silk chair, like the chatter, but actual silk. Oh, we've got something that needs watering. Sam Lander is saying that it's anime time, and we'll be back in a bit. Sam Lander, thank you so much for the lurk. Hopefully we will uh, see you afterwards. What is saying, as, as expensive as scallops are, and the fact that you have to cook them when you buy them, or maybe the next day, I'd prefer not to experiment with them. Yeah, n now I'm, I'm legitimately curious, like, because bacon-wrapped scallops is something that Jab has had. I'm very curious on how they're prepared, because I don't know anything about cooking, but it sounds like it's a challenging meal to do safely and correctly. Samlander says, I'd use a neutral oil or clarified butter to get a higher cooking temperature, but otherwise, yes. Thinks that uh, Jab's idea would work okay. Okay. I believe we are at our destination. Uh, except we're not. Oh, did we? Are we at the turtle? I have absolutely no memory of what we might have planted here, so we'll just grab it all. And then we'll bank away some stuff that maybe we don't have the most of. Like, 
Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It's a great example of a playthrough that I really, really enjoyed. I had a great time with it, but attempting to upload that to YouTube 10 videos at a time uh, would take a very long time. Uh, and that was that was a huge amount of fun to go through from beginning to end, but I just don't know that it would have the same the same impact as a tighter and uh, sort of like more more focused playthrough. Can I get some zinc in here too? We've got 40 zinc. Uh, let's put in some silver. Are you all done? Okay, bye. Javis saying it's possible that the scallops are cooked are cooked frozen and then deep fried after wrapping them with bacon, uh, like carnival food. Somebody wants something. Oh, and we should give the foods to uh, Uncle Atoll. Mm -hmm. Look, Peanut, I think I've overstayed my welcome on this ship. I know, I know, I've only just joined you guys recently, but I don't exactly have any say in this, you know. I wish I had. Don't worry, I had a jolly good time. No regrets. I did love that lounge. A bit too much, maybe? I think maybe you might need to restock. Okay, let's go. You know the way, Bampina. Oh, is that it? Is it time for it to say goodbye to Giovanni? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna feel bad about it. Whatever Giovanni was meant to learn in life, he didn't really sh demonstrate that. Uh, you know, it would have been nice if he had managed to pull some sort of value out of the way that he treated people and maybe adjusted it a little bit. But if he's not capable, he knows it's his time, right? So we will uh, we'll drop him off just after we get our upgrade. Okay, let's do the cherry. And now I think it's probably gonna be give. Let's give him... Uh, I'll recognize it when I see it. The tuna tataki. A finer taste of Gustav always shine in his food choices. Uh, let's give him the corn dogs. Hold on. Oh. Wow, a corn dog. Good choice, boys. Uh, we will give him the final meal just after we visit, because uh, we can do this while we're sailing, right? My mother had a coop in her childhood farm. Oh, my mother. She wasn't mad at me when I did bad things. She was disappointed in me. I suppose I wasn't what I was cracked up to be. <laughs> so, the, what the coop? I, okay, I'll take your word for it, man. Uh, so, now... So, we don't have enough silica powder, but we can get it. I'll be right back. Let's try to do that before the, the sun goes down. We're not even at dusk yet, so we do have some time. Silica powder is... is it quartz? Do I remember that correctly? Now when Samuelin put um, BBIB, as in be back in a bit, Every time I look over, I'm like, oh, blah 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 <laughs> Some of all the bees. Silica powder. I feel like maybe we need one more. Uh, let's just... We might have picked up one separately from the rest of the pack. Okay, done. Oh, but is Jab still here? I wanted to ask Jab if he has seen or has any thoughts on Warhammer 40,000 Inquisitor which I guess is a top-down action role-playing game of a Diablo style, except that you're playing as one of a few different um, Warhammer classes and, like, massacring the Zenos. Seem to get pretty good reviews. So a smithy, a, call, a call, cow stall, and a cellar. Okay. And can we do the coral bouquet? We can. And then the mist cleaner. So we don't have any bottled ectoplasm or crystal glass sheet, and we would need three spirit flowers. So we're a ways out from that. And this would require... 
How much money do we have? We have 39,000, we need 45,000 to get the immense size boat. So I think we're probably gonna have to come back for that. But that's all of our blueprint station upgrades. We can go no further. Okay. So... Um... And we know we're gonna need money, so I can try to go to some place where we can get that. We're not gonna get a lot of money here, but it's some. You know, it's a good place to get started, at least. Okay, if Uncle Atoll is available, we will give him the final meal. Like, I... This is gonna sound horribly petty, because it is, but I honestly wouldn't mind having uh, Giovanni on the ship when we have dinner with everybody else. Here's the thing. It's not me that he betrayed, but it is Astrid. And I consider, like Stella would consider Astrid to be a friend of hers. Um, I don't think that a spirit fairer can afford to play favorites, but I do think that when asked, Hey, let's put on a dinner for all of your favorite friends here on the boat. I think that having Astrid there and Giovanni not there, I think that's perfectly fair. And I, I think that he should be here to know that he really hurt her and that I don't think very much of it. Maybe that will be the lesson that he'll bring with him to whatever happens to him on the other side of the spirit door. The ever door. Uh, Grumpy is saying... Okay, hold on. Jab is saying, I've not watched or played it. Warhammer is something I got interested in just in the last couple of years. Um, Warhammer is interesting because so many people are into it for so many different reasons. Um, yeah, I... That's... It's the... Um, whoops. Hold on. Let's stop by here. Start the event. Yes. The Warhammer game... Uh, like, I, I saw somebody who had like actually played Diablo 4 and was like, of anything, it really got me back in the mood for to play this Inquisitor game. Okay. And that seems like a strong recommendation. Like, I actually like this previous game more than the new hotness that everybody's talking about. That makes me curious about, like, hey, what's the old hotness? What what was it? Because I I guess I'd heard of it, but hadn't really heard that much about it. Um, gosh, I really want to try to catch these. Uh. Yeah, I was glad that, um, Chivalry had so much fun with Fallout 76. I, it's one of those things that I don't feel like it has ever really recovered from its uh, less than ste steady and stellar launch. But he is not the only person that I've known who's had good times with it. Uh, Holly Green uh, is a writer whose work that I've enjoyed in the past. And uh, she and her friends like basically do this whole like almost like LARPing inside of the game where they all work as like newspaper writers and they go around and like get stories from people and interview them and put out like an in-universe newspapers. Uh, they build these like really elaborate um, bases using like the base crafting stuff and all the cosmetics that have been released. Okay. I don't think that on the whole we made all that many glims, but... Cami Pen finished this game about three hours ago. I'm playing it through the first time, uh, Cami Pen. What would you say overall was your uh, was your thought on it? Because I'm having a great time with it. So uh, we wanted to find Uncle Atoll if we can possibly intercept him before it's bedtime. Here he is. We've got one more meal for him. Then we can start our dinner. Yeah, hold on. I'm literally trying to catch you for that purpose. Can I... I love you, Daffodil, but I'm trying to catch this frog. Give. Okay. Um, 
I gotta try to remember what the last meal was. We did the... Oh, the noodle soup. That's exactly what it was. Ooh. Soup! Yeah. Way to go, Astrid! Okay, I mean, if he's willing to do the meal tonight, I'm game. Go. Down. Campy Penny is saying it was a very good game. Some of the quests left you like, what do I do next? And I think they could have done the map easier. The map I've... So, I did have one issue with the map so far. I really got jammed up trying to find Zinc in the previous episode, but then ultimately did find it. Okay, so he seems very satisfied with himself, but not in a let's all have a meal together way. I bet he's hungry. I don't know if he's hungry. No, actually, he's not. He's got a full apple. Okay, he is not yet ready. Oh, and I did have a bug at one point where I had to, like, exit the game, and I was I was really worried that we were going to lose, like, everything. Like, like get, get soft-locked into a situation. But, um, exiting, exiting now to the main menu and then coming back in fixed it right up. Also, uh, Cammy Pen, I offer you my, my heartfelt apologies for the appearance of my boat. I'm not very good at design. <laughs> I've got a lot of stuff all over the place. It is not laid out in a way that anyone would consider logical or efficient. If you have any questions, I will help if you want. If something comes up, I will absolutely keep that in mind. Uh, I do... I'm, I'm happy on most occasions to... Uh, struggle a bit and try to figure it out, but there will be times, uh, like, I came close with the zinc. I came pretty close with the zinc, uh, saying, like, I just don't know where to go, and now we have, like, just, just rafters of, of zinc. But even that cooking, I thought that cooking the meals was gonna be way more challenging, like, oh, shit, I need to find some, uh, I'm trying to think of some, like, super exotic, some monkey's brains or something, and just... No, it was fine. I had everything on hand that I needed. That's a clue reference, by the way. Monkey's brains, though popular in Cantonese cuisine, are not often to be found in Washington, D.C. Anytime I pop out with something, like, super apocryphal that I'm worried that most people may not have even seen, it's like, uh-oh, what are they gonna think my mind went to? Okay, can we have a chat? No, still? Well, then we're gonna set a course for the Everdoor because we do have somebody that's uh, ready to go. Maybe we have to wake everybody up. Maybe that's what it is. Let's get our eggs. And then we're gonna refill our thing here. Oh, we've got some more silk threads. That's great. Yeah, what a happy accident. Cami Pen, did you know, I think this is the, the mulberry tree. Did you know that that's where you get silk from? When I, when I shook the tree and silk came out, I was like, oh, okay. Cami Pen said that it took about 40 hours to finish. This is, let's see, this is episode 11 or 12. This is 12 and most episodes I think have been in the three to four hour range. So I think that gives a general sense of how far I am into it. I'm going to plant our odd seeds. You can never have too many old shoes. The leek seed. Okay, let's go ring the bell. And absent more information about where we should be headed, I might check to see if there's anything that we can uh, improve. Oh, we can do the smithy. Actually, now that I think about it, let's do a couple things. Let's wake everybody up. Okay, smithy. I don't have a cow. We'll probably want to have a cow uh, pen soon, but... Seller smithy. Okay, 
So we need some comet powder, silica powder, and ash plank. So we can get all of this stuff and we should have plenty of uh, like materials for it. Silica, comet, ash. Let's go somewhere. Uh, let's say hello to the silver dragon, I guess. Sure, why not? If we wind up catching some lightning or something else on the way, so be it. And it does look like Uncle Atoll has something to say. Hopefully it's about this big dinner he wants to do. Good work. We just need a place to eat now. I don't think the deck is a right, the right place for a five-course meal. How about the big city, Hummingburg? That island with the shrine and the nice tables? Nothing too fancy, but still a night on the town. I'll make us a nice spot. Let's head over there. All right. It's better than where I was going, which was just any random place. Astrid, I will get you a snack here in just a second. But don't overeat. We don't want to spoil your appetite. Hummingburg is here. The one thing I hated was that you could not look at the map at night, so you could not plan for the next day. It would be nice if they would let you look at the map, even if you weren't able to. Like, you could set the course so that the next morning the ship would start going. Like, not being able to move at night, I I will accept that. But not being able to check the map, I agree. I'd like to be able to do that. Let's give her some popcorn. Mm -hmm. It's just like a snack. Oh. Uh, and you can have some cherries, because I've got a lot of those. I hope he talks a lot about it. Okay, let's do a hug. And I'll hug him as well. Like I said, I don't like the way that he treats people, but that's not a good... Oops. That's not a good reason to mistreat him. Javis said, I've been a very good... Had a very good day crafting so far. Rolled at level 275 damage slash crit chance, which doesn't mean anything if you don't have a reference, but it is very, very good. That's awesome. I rarely get into, like, min-maxing to the point where, like, I'm getting into it that deep, but it's very easy for me to imagine the satisfaction of getting something that you've been reaching for for a long time and getting what I imagine is a fairly significant power boost. Um... Yeah, so for Cami Pen, if you, like, did all the quests and stuff, uh, we're currently, you can probably tell, at a quest where Uncle Atoll asked, like, hey, let's invite our three favorite friends to have a meal. And I have invited Astrid, um, Gustav, and Mickey. I would have asked, if I, if I had my druthers, it probably would have been Astrid, Alice, and Summer. Because Gwen has been off the boat for so long, I don't think that she ever would have been eligible for that. But those would have been probably my... Th it's not that I don't like Gustav. It's just that I feel like I just met Gustav relative to the others. Okay, are you hungry? A little bit. Yeah, cherries turn out to be a real, a real great cash crop for that. Now, while we're going, we're almost at our goal. We can still take a few moments to do some crushing. Let's get some silica. And then let's do some Comet Rock as well. And then we'll go aboard and uh, go ashore, rather. You know, maybe we'll go up when the sun is going down. Because we're going to need a little bit of this stuff. Are you replaying the game or this is your first play? This is my very first playthrough. So I don't know anything about what happens story-wise or, like, progression-wise after, like, I just got the Crusher in this episode, for example. Now, I don't remember how much of each thing that I needed. So, let's just take a quick look. Uh, build... Smithy. So, we need six more silica powders and then the ash planks. Ash planks are going to be real easy. 
bet we can just put in like uh, three ash and get what we want. I'm not very good at the woodcutting game, but I've gotten better in recent episodes. Okay, that's probably all we need there. Oh, shit. I don't remember if it was the silica or the comet that I needed. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I had to go back and check. Diablo 3 is probably the closest that I really got into. So it was the silica. Um, really optimizing bills. And even then, like, we didn't go that deep into it. But, yeah, I think it was the Demon Hunter in particular. I, I really, like, filled out some sets and got, like, the perfect gems in there. So we want six all told. And if there's something better than just like hitting the X button as rapidly as possible on this, I don't know. So while we're just crushing up, and I don't know that we're, I'm gonna have time to like get into it in the way that I kind of want to, but we did this weekend have a chance to see the Power Rangers 30th reunion special thing, like film, that was done for Netflix. It's called Power Rangers Once and Always. Oh my, like, <laughs> I, have, I have some thoughts on that. Okay, so we can now do the smithy, and then I'm, like, we should go ashore. I, I don't want to miss the chance to do this meal, but I was also thinking that we should probably go when, like, the sun is on its way down. Okay, smithy. Yeah. That seems like a fine place for it, I guess. Um, what else could we get? Because we could, like, like, the cow place. Cellar. Uh, and cow stall. So that's cop one copper ingot and a cotton fabric. I bet that we can smelt while we uh, loom, honestly. Let's put in some copper. Oops. And it just, it takes a minute to get up to temp, but then we can just like walk away from it after a certain point. So the most curious thing about Once and Always is that it is not a secret that the original Blue Ranger, David Yost, worked for years to get this project done. Like, like, this was something that, by all accounts, he worked very hard on and cared a lot about. And... And, and in the wake of its release, and it's like, like it, it did very, very well for Netflix in its release window. Like, a lot of people tuned in to watch it. Um... I don't understand why somebody... Like, sorry, sorry. The end of that sentence was... I think we needed some more cotton. Um, he was talking about, like, additional specials. He wants to do more of these. So this seems to be something that he really cared about doing. So why then, when you watch Once and Always, is, the, is he coming to it with, like, the lowest level of energy? Like... If you if you didn't know better, you would swear to God that he like he had like a child being held hostage, and that's the only reason that he's there. He's basically showing up and saying the lines, and the level of energy that he brings to the project is so different from every other person on screen. Everybody else looks like they're there and having a good time, and he feels like and like I know that dude can act. Like, I, I've seen him for years. He can bring it. And here he's choosing not to. And I don't know if that was a weird acting choice. I'm just, I was very confused by it because it honestly feels like he's there under duress. And yet he, he was like one of the people that worked the hardest to make it happen. It's, it's weird. Anyway, um, as uncouth as it would be for me to pose as a true specialist, I can assure you this machine you built is perfect. Be proud of yourself, Skipper. Now you can craft the most elaborate materials with the greatest ease. Art can finally move forward. There are, of course, technicalities involved. As I said, I'm far from being a skilled blacksmith myself. All I can tell you, Skipper, is that it's most probably rather straightforward. My understanding is that each material has its own specific heating and hammer-shaping uh, properties. 
Some will require constant small hammer hits. Some will have you whack it on the high whack it with the highest strength you can muster. Watching how hot your hammer becomes will be a crucial observation skill. But enough blathering. Go at it. I'll watch you from a safe distance right over here. Well, no, because I'm gonna go to meal. Yeah, no, it's it's food time, sir. I don't want it to get dark. I wanna have I wanna have dinner with everybody. Sprout! This looks great! I knew you would pull it through, and everyone made it. Are you ready to eat? Yes, I am. All right. Thank you so much for being gathered here. I couldn't have done it alone. This feels like a real family dinner. You've all made me feel part of your family. Hey, everybody's happy. And of course, Stella, my niece. Thank you. All right, I'll stop talking now. Just dig in. Om nom 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 nom. <laughs> Oh, am I supposed to play or something? I... nothing is happening. I didn't mean to cut that short. I pressed B because I was trying to, like, do a thing, but I think that that was probably it. I hope I didn't miss something. Okay. Oh, I think this is our second letter. I didn't open the previous one. Uh, here's your package. B. And here's your package. A quest. <laughs> they mailed me a questionable meal. It's literally just rot. Okay. So, this is what, um, Cammy Pen was saying. Uh, you, you can't even check. Yeah, you can't even look at the map, which, it, again, it'd be super nice if you could set, chart a course for where you think that you'd want to go. <laughs> Oh, uncle's gone. Okay. We'll check our quest log here. Improve their house. Yeah, we got to take a look at that. Ask Gustav, Astrid, and Bruce and Mickey about Atoll's whereabouts. I have a feeling that uh, Giovanni might not be our only visit to the Everdoor. Mm-hmm. At all? Uh, hold on. Indeed, uh, I wonder where he might be. I don't know why, Munchkin, but I have a hunch he won't be back. Mm -hmm. And that makes me sad. He's always been so joyful and funny. Oh, but I won't miss him snoring, that's for sure. Sorry I couldn't be of more help, Stella. Oh, he's very hungry. My time is quite valuable. However, I've noticed that a passenger is missing. What was his name? Huh? We literally- Dude, that sucks! We just had dinner with him! That bombastic friend of yours. Oh, well. Wow! I take it back. I think I would have wanted to have dinner with, uh, Giovanni. That- that's super shitty, dude. Here, have some alu gobi. Another facet of my resistance- existence is revealed. This might be exotic to some, but I consider it a must. I'm also going to give you a hug, even though I just dissed the shit out of your uncle. Oh, wait. There's a spirit flower here? No, he didn't leave leave, did he? Really? Usually we don't get the spirit flower until, like, we escort him to the Everdoor. This doesn't feel good. I found something you might like, perhaps. Here's a gift from my collection. I hope you appreciate the value of the such oddities, such as my old carpet. Which is actually quite valuable. Let's refill the seeds. I am long past convinced that we actually need this number of eggs, but I just don't like the idea of the chicken starving. Uh, hold on. Hey, come down. Mickey. Mickey, stop. I need to ask you about Uncle Atoll. God damn it. My brother's dying over here. We need food. The time was 30 minutes ago. 
And none of that crayfish garbage. Free grub, finally. Mickey wants decorations for a new place. This will cost you big money. Wait, but that can't be it, it. Hold on. Use the smithy. Wow, wow. Please do not spoil this, but that seems like an inappropriate exit for Uncle Atoll. Well, we need a bronze sheet, so let's make one of these. I have absolutely no idea what I'm supposed to do when this counts down. I'm pressing X. Okay. I need a glass sheet. Uh, clear glass sheet. I'm pretty sure that I need one of these. That was impressive, Skipper. You did really well for a neophyte. Mm. You must have noticed that if your hammer runs too hot, letting it cool down without hitting the materials is of paramount importance. It is a game of patience, precision, and vigor. Different materials will behave differently. Of this you can be certain. Oh, but I'm sure you must already have... You must already be giddy with anticipation at the idea of forging uh -huh. new materials. Well, despair not, my little grasshopper. Uh, fine. A vast array of fine elements will be needed to build all I have in mind. Well, now that we've... Wow, was that too much? Clearly. Too hot, okay. I think that we saw that we need an, an uh, no, we need some silica powder. Well, I accidentally feel you know where we should go. We should go to the Everdoor because we can do the hammering and stuff on the path. Uh, yep. Okay, so we need some more silica powder. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what would be nice? Something to eat. It's been like five minutes. How about some noodle soup? You made my favorite again. You're such a sweetheart. Okay, silica powder. I wonder why, like, every other game has some in instance of timing or precision, and this one specifically is just, no, I just jam on X. Um, can I do this before the thing gets cold? Like, are, are we allowed? So I, I do feel like starting the event, it's worth some money, and we are a little bit shy on our big boat upgrade. Warhammer Total War 40k. Oops. Uh, Warhammer 3, specifically. Uh, an issue is that I didn't really spend as much time with Warhammer Total War 2 as I would have thought. Wow, they're really, they're really grouping up the lightning strikes for me. Okay. I think Daffodil is grabbing some for me. 
because the, the lightning strike is happening very quickly, and also she's getting shocked. Hello to Tan Crowd. Tan Crowd, I hope that you've had a wonderful day. Uh, you may be into Sunday now, for all I know, depending on what part of the the world you're from. I hope that you've had a great, a great Saturday and into a great Sunday, hopefully. Okay, let's grab our peaches. I described it earlier as shaking the tree, but Stella really doesn't do that. She more like communes with the tree. Okay. This may or may not be valid for us. Nope, that was too much. That was still too much. Okay, is there anything else that we know for a fact? Some sort of uh, sheep that we need to have? Well, I mean, we're probably going to need to have a little bit of everything. Let's make a steel sheet. We got a minute. It has, and for Tan Crowd, it is Sunday. I wonder if we'll ever do it well enough to get more than one. Um, crystal glass sheet. I don't, I don't see why not. Like, I'm proceeding on the assumption that every single thing in this menu exists for some reason, and at some point, we're going to need to have at least one of them. And this way, if we need more than one, well, we're already partway there. This is going to... Hold on, can I be out of this? Oh, shit. we're passing through another lightning section. Again, I need the money. Or do I? I actually haven't looked at our total number of glims lately. Yeah, once and always, it just had a real, um, like, there was a certain tonal inconsistency where, uh, like, at parts, it, it mostly seemed like it just wanted to be goofy callback fun from, like, the 1990s, like, the late 90s, but then, like, some of the stuff felt, like, super serious. I also think that referencing it in any way as a reunion is being a, a bit on the generous side because of the original Power Rangers cast, it had David Yost, the original Blue Ranger, and Walter Emanuel Jones, who was the original Black Ranger, and nobody else from the original, original cast. Um, reading up on it, it does appear that Amy Jo Johnson was invited to participate, but uh, declined based on what she described as being uh, numerous personal issues. It's fine. It's nobody's business. She doesn't want to do it. That's it. And uh, it was primarily filmed and in production while David Jason Frank was still alive. And he also opted not to participate. Uh, I guess I guess he said at one point that he felt like he had been he had given enough to the franchise and wanted to focus on his movie, which is still coming out like this September. I think it is. Tan Crowd is asking, what is this game about? So, this is our boat. Uh, we So, my character right here is Stella, and she is a spirit farer. And what she does is she uh, finds souls that are ready to go on to a voyage with her, and she gets to know them, and she, sacri she uh, satisfies some requests that they have. And along this journey, they come to realize where it is that they need to be and where they need to be is the Everdoor, which is a a portal, a gateway to their next gen, the, to their next uh, destination. Uh, and I think that we're actually uh, just about to be there. So we are going to be bidding farewell to one of our crew members here in just a moment. 
It is a very big boat. It starts off very small, but we've been upgrading it steadily. Let's give our sheep some food. I think we're there. I think we've arrived. Uh, will you eat burned food? Oh, maybe that's what the questionable meals do. Sheep will eat any old garbage. They don't care what kind of food it is. It's just edible. Hold on. We, we will go and interact with uh, Giovanni here in just one second. Let's plant some coffee. Some sunflowers, because we need those for the seeds. And how about some corn? This is the last of our corn seeds. Here we are, Bambina. I know I'm not exact. You know I'm not exactly thrilled, but I've got to go. Ready to bring me there? Yeah, I think it's the best decision. Okay, let's go. Uh, hold on. Let's feed this sheep. No, we can't interact with the sheep. All right, we will walk with Giovanni. Over. I feel like uh, being compassionate here on their way out is sort of a core thing that Sella would want to be able to do. All right. See you soon, everybody. You know what, Peanut? The second I saw you, I knew you were someone special. Someone who, no matter what happened, would always be there and do the right thing. I could see that in people, see the cracks in them. It's easy, light shines through. I guess that's why I fell in love with Astrid. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, Astrid. She was the toughest nut you could imagine, but she had such an intense light inside shining through, warmth and fire too. Her laugh made mountains tremble, and everyone was happy when she was around. Well, I was happy. I've always spent so much time making sure other people were having fun, making jokes and being the funny guy, but they only came for her, really. Her majestic, raw, radiant soul. But you, Bambina, you've got that look in your eyes, that soft, killer vibe. I saw so much of myself in you, your bravery, your sense of humor, your gusto. I know it's hard doing what you do, accompanying people towards their end. It takes more than guts to do something like that. It takes a soul of steel. But hey, good news, you've got it. You've got it, Bambina. Even if you doubt, even if you don't have faith in yourself, I have so much faith in you. So much faith in your strength. Mm -hmm. I believe in you, Peanut. Now and forever. And hey, if you need anything, I won't be far. Mm -hmm. I'll be right there, standing right beside you. I'll always be there. Always. I know I shouldn't leave so soon. Believe me, I wish I could have stayed longer. Right here with you, Peanut. Mm -hmm. Promise me you'll take care of Astrid when I'm gone, okay? And don't miss me too much, will you? I've never deserved you anyway. But I've loved you, and that won't stop even if I'm not around anymore. The ones who really love you never really leave you, you know? Mm -hmm. Life is amazing, isn't it? A whirlwind, a tremor, a fr flickering flame. I've tried so much to live to the fullest. Mm -hmm. I regret nothing. Nothing but leaving Astrid. Nothing but leaving you, Stella. Mm -hmm. I wish I could have seen you grow up even more, but here we are. All right, pour yourself one for me, will you? Ciao, Bella.
Oh, it's been a minute. And hello to Harmonious Crow, who says, what a beautiful place. This game is gorgeous. In the animation, in the art direction, in the writing. Whoops. I pressed X to jump. That is not the jump button. Uh, okay. I'm just making sure that I'm not going the wrong way. This is only the second time that we've been to the sort of crystal memory place. And the first time that we were here, I wasn't sure whose memories we were seeing because it was right when when Gwen left us. But now I think that we can tell by like, if nothing else, the hairstyle and stuff like and it was heavily implied before that these are Stella's memories. Uh, hold on. I think we do go up, sorry. Turn, Spiritfarer, humbled by your confusion, your disarray, your fear. Time and again you call me by my name, whisper echoes of my essence to those too afraid to hear it. As you stand before me, hesitation floods your heart. You seek to tame, but you only serve, and now you truly see me. See what I inflict upon those who you, those you love. All these paths you've crossed, these souls you've embraced, their lives intertwined with yours, their faces etched upon your memory. You've opened your heart to the suffering of others, and in return, their spark warms your heart and shapes your fate. Every spirit a reminder, every spirit a goodbye. What do they teach you? Their struggles, their drama, their memories, your memories? Are they saying their farewells, or are you saying yours? But you are not yet ready, Stella, and these souls still need you. Carry on your task, Spiritfarer. Soon your time will come, and we will meet again for the last time. And there's Stella, just a big grin on her face. Everything's cool. So, let's go get the spirit flower from Giovanni's room, and I don't- I don't remember if the next thing that we wanted to do required two or three, but regardless, we will be at two once we pick this up. So, I want to be- I don't believe in defining somebody entirely by the worst thing that they've ever done. I feel like people can grow and change. They can express regret. They can feel remorse. They can be motivated by the feelings of guilt over what they've done to be different, better people in the future. And even if they might be inclined towards selfishness or a lack of empathy towards others, they can learn through experiences to overcome those early inclinations and to be better. 
The trouble is that I just don't see that personally. Um, oh, wow, no hug for you. Um, in Giovanni, because it's not like he betrayed Astrid 10 years ago. He did it yesterday. Like he did it right now and expressed no regret over it until he was on the boat toward the Everdor. And even then, all he talked to was Stella. He didn't express any apologies to her. And if anybody is seeing this for the first time, and like this is their exposure to how I feel about the game, when we said goodbye to, Al to Alice, that was really hard. Like, like even now, I don't really want to think about it because it it, it hits me. Um, Alice is a fictional character, but the story that was told with Alice was one that really resonated with me, and it's difficult not to transpose real people onto the story that's being told here with the fictional characters. So I'm not sitting here, like, just poo-pooing, like, hand-waving the writing, and maybe people have known folks like Giovanni and were, like, deeply sad when they passed. To me, Giovanni seemed like somebody who cared nothing for the emotions of the people around him that cared deeply for him. And, like, it really bothers me that when Astrid... Astrid went to great lengths to find Giovanni, and when she did, he was like, oh, you're the one for me, we'll never be apart, I'm so sorry for whatever came before, but now let's rededicate ourselves. And then immediately, like, was on the boat for five minutes and already had Stella going around to get gifts for some other woman that he wanted to, to mack on. It just... <sighs> that whole thing where on the end, you know, I've, I, I've always loved you and I'll always be with you, here with you. To me, that's no different. It's no different than what he was saying to Stella. Uh, let me give this goat some questionable, or the sheep some questionable meal because they seem perfectly happy with it. And hello to, uh, to, um... Moo as well. Moo, I did see in the announcement earlier that Grumpy says that you guys will be doing some tandem streams for the bike riding. I think that's super cool. I am looking forward to it. So, this seems like a good place to stop. When we return, I will not remember that we are currently at the Everdoor, but I will remember that we said goodbye to Giovanni, and what we'll be doing next is... I think it's time to do some upgrades, particularly on Mickey's house. I think that we now have the resources to do that, but let's actually find that out for the next episode as Stella just stretches out and we will hit save and quit. What I'm saying is that like, it's not a criticism of the game to say that paying attention to the writing I don't know if as a player I'm supposed to like Giovanni. It feels like there in the end the the creators feel like I should, like we can have this heart to heart with him, but any expression that Giovanni makes of regret or sadness or loyalty or love or commitment, it just, all of that is always going to ring hollow because I've seen how he treats other people. I have no reason to believe that he feels differently than Stella. He might actually mean what he says right in the moment, but it doesn't follow through to any future behavior and he seems incredibly capricious. I, I mean, I meant what I said when I'm like, Giovanni has realized that his time with the crew has come to an end and that it's time to go through the Everdoor to a future that he cannot possibly comprehend because none of us can. But he knows that he's now ready to take that step. And if Stella had a role in helping to get him there, I do feel good about that. But it's difficult for me to feel the same way that I, for him that I did about um, Alice or Gwen or even Summer, whose story, I, I have to say, like went a little bit just over my head, just because they seem like genuinely decent people who lived complicated lives, maybe didn't entirely understand where they were as they sort of appeared in this post-life and were able to instinctually navigate themselves to where they realized that they were ready to move on. Whereas Giovanni was just like, ah, I treated people like trash in my real life. I'm going to continue to do that here. Yeah, I guess I should feel bad about it. And I'm going to say that I do, but I don't actually. So I don't know. I don't, I hope that that doesn't sound too judgmental or too like, oh, now I'm like mad at the game because neither of those is true. I don't think it's just, I don't like the way that Giovanni treated people, and I don't like the way that he treated people that I would consider Stella to be friends with. I like Stella, I like Astrid, 
Uh, and I like the others on the on the boat, and I don't think that he treated people well. Uh, Mickey is a different situation where I think that Mickey puts on a big, like, tough guy face when he doesn't actually intend anybody any harm. He just doesn't know any other way to be. I may be wrong about that, and we will see. Oh, and Moo is very surprised to hear about the tandem bike rides with Grumpy and the streaming. So I guess that's news to her. Anyway, we're going to call it here for episode 12 of Spiritfarer. This was, above anything, any other concern, like a really, really great um, way to round out our Saturday. And we will see you again tomorrow morning, hopefully for some morning time Rift Breaker before we raid over to Samlander. Until next time, you guys, thank you so much. And I hope you have a great night.